Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. This is the video I have been so excited for. This is the video I've mentioned in my last two videos. This is a collaboration with the amazing Moulds and Shapes over in the Netherlands. And when they contacted me, I can tell you I did a happy dance in my kitchen. <laughs> this is the most stunning coaster mould I think I've ever used. It is a detailed embossed mandala style and just this is a close-up look at this this is so so beautiful and it's so handy because it comes in one big integrated piece which is just amazing to use they also along with this they sent me the matching coaster holder and here it is so in this video i'm going to be making all four coasters and the coaster holder and i hope you absolutely love it all details will be linked down below including the discount code they gave me for you guys which is ccc5 at the checkout to get 5% off all of your molds. This code is ongoing guys, so as long as you continue to buy it, that code will continue to be there. Their website is fully stocked of some of the most incredible molds. Honestly, I've had a really good search and I cannot wait to get my hands on more. <laughs> Everything I'm using in this video today will be linked down below. I am wearing my respirator, I've got my eye goggles on and I've got my gloves on and my window is slightly open so safety first if this is the first resin video you're ever seeing safety first my plan was to use super glue gorilla glue gel for the holder didn't go to plan but i'll talk more about that at the end i'm also using a super soft silicon tool to enable me to get that resin into all of those little nooks and crannies because it's such a detailed mold i'm scared i'm gonna get bubbles I did decide to go with blue. Blue is my favourite colour of all time. How can you not love it? So many shades. Then I decided to get brave. I decided I was going to go with transparent pigment, light blue transparent pigment. <laughs> so for me, it was so important not to get air bubbles. I mixed up a batch of resin and the first thing I did was just pour a little bit into each of these moulds. Again, if you've used these moulds, might not need to do this. I've never used them, so I was just so worried, A, about air holes, and B, that it was transparent so you would, you would see them. I would not be able to hide from that. You would literally see them. So I'm taking my silicon tool, and I am just brushing that resin into every single nook and cranny. Again, personal preference. I just thought, first time trying them, I just really want to get it right. I really want to do my best not to get those pesky edge bubbles that sometimes we get when we've got that 90 degree straight edge. But yeah, you just want to go really, really softly and gently. I was also worried because they're so beautiful and I didn't want to spoil them. So this is what I'm doing. Again, you can do it your own way. You don't have to follow me doing this. But when you see the end results, I'm telling you it was worth every second taking that extra bit of time at this first stage just to get all of those little nooks and crannies. What I did then was came back with the rest of the resin and I just filled them up to around about one mil. I left about a mil at the top because my plan was to actually add some darker pigment to that resin so that I could just add a bit of a contrast against the light and the blue. I was worried about using heat. I, I was very worried. So you'll see how quick I went in with that heat gun. I think when I get cheaper moulds, I tend to spend a lot more time using the heat gun. But again, I was so worried um, about these moulds because they're so delicate. But they handled it really well um, just to get those extra little air bubbles off of the surface. Um, it did really come in handy. So you just see me here doing exactly the same to the holder, um, taking my time, rubbing that resin into every single little nook and cranny, just to make sure, honestly, I've never spent so long aiming for perfection. <laughs> we all know nothing's perfect on my channel. <laughs> we all know this, but honestly, they were just, they were too beautiful for me to mess it up. I decided at this stage I wanted them even darker. The idea was that they'd be darker in the middle and lighter on the outside. I'm not sure you can really see that with the end product, but this is what I went with at the time. I just added some darker blue colorant and I added to the top. So at this stage, I'm now filling these molds right to the very top with that darker blue pigment. I think it added something. I'm just not 100% sure I can see it. 
What you can see in the end product is the even darker circle that I added right at the very end, which I'm not sure I actually filmed. I did the same on the holder as well. And yeah, I, again, <laughs> I'm not sure you could even really see it to be honest. Now, like I said, I am worried about using heat with these molds, but there were some bubbles right in the center. Now, I was scared using this lighter, but as you can see, I didn't go anywhere near the mold. And that is key. You really cannot afford with molds like these to go near that silicon. They are handmade and they are stunning. What you don't want is to burn them with your lighter. So I did right in the center, just get rid of those pesky center bubbles. So it is the next day. My next step is to demold and add the detail with the silver acrylic paint. Wait till you see the details on these. I mean, I know I said at the beginning I've not used molds, um, coaster molds like these. They actually were so beautiful. I couldn't stop looking at them. And I did toy with the idea of just leaving them here. I was thinking, do I just leave them? Um, but you know I can't leave much look at this all of that extra effort when it came to using the silicon tool not a single edge bubble not a single air bubble in sight I at this point I felt like it was all worth it you know um, just using that silicon tool in the beginning to get all of those little details it was worth it it really was worth it I had to be very careful getting them out of the mould, I was worried, but um, they came out beautifully. And I think the fourth one pretty much popped out, um, the fourth one was definitely easier to get out. Yeah, absolutely love it. And the same exact same with the holder, they all came out stunning. And even holding them up to the light, I have to say, no air bubbles, I was so, so happy. I think the only one that had air bubbles was maybe this centre point because using heat on that center point was a worry. Like you really just don't want to get near the mold. So the next step for me, you don't have to do this. You can leave them as is. I think even left, look at that. It's so, oh, it's so gorgeous. At this stage, even just leaving them like that is okay. You know, again, it's your own preference, but I decided to give them a bit of a wow. I put a poll out on my YouTube about section, my community tab. And actually, you guys voted, so thank you so much. It was like 78% voted for silver. So I went with silver, and this is actually your colour combination that I'm doing right here. So if anyone doesn't like it, <laughs> you, can, you can all blame each other. This is not me. <laughs> thank you so much to everyone who did vote. What I'm doing here, I'm just going in with cheap. Now, I was advised to use cheap acrylic paint. I'm going in with cheap silver acrylic paint. And I'm using my hand first because I want to make sure it gets into all of those nooks and crannies before I go and use my silicon tool. And I'm just rubbing it all over these molds, making sure that each and every single one of those divots, those little details are covered. And I have to say, I think silver was the best choice. I think you all made the best choice. What I'm doing now is I'm going to come back in with my silicon tool. I'm going to rub a little bit more over, but I'm also going to scrape it off at the same time. Once all of that is scraped off, then I'm going to leave it a few hours until it is fully dried. And then I'm going to come back in with a wet cloth and I'm going to wipe off all of the excess paint that is not in those nooks and crannies.
after I had done that and I started wiping them down, the paint had dried to the point where it had sunk. You know, when your resin sinks, the paint had pretty much done the same thing. So I felt like I needed to fill them up again. But I also felt like they needed a bit of something something. So I added some fine silver glitter into my silver paint. And I'm so glad I did because the brightness, even just seeing it here, the brightness was doubled. It was such, I'm so glad I did it. And actually it has given the end result quite a, quite a wow factor instead of just the silver metallic that glitter really really came through and it the just yeah I love it I absolutely love it and this is what they look like they are now dry I'm gonna start wiping them down um they are really really gorgeous you can see that silver glitter in there it's just made such a difference I'm using a damp cloth to wipe this off but I am very aware there is glitter here so I will not be washing that damp cloth out in the bathroom we want to make sure if you're using glitter please be a responsible glitter user and none of this glitter is going to be ending up in the ocean so this cloth will stay in my craft room until it is fully dried and then i will shake the glitter out i'm just working my way around all of the edges of all of these coasters and the coaster holder and the paint really does come off quite easily I was also worried about scratching the resin but that didn't happen it just it really just worked a dream the only thing I'm going to be marking with a silver outline is the holder I honestly felt that putting a silver outline around those blue coasters when I've spent so long trying to get them looking beautiful and clear with no bubbles I felt like putting a silver edge on them was just gonna hide all of that <laughs> I, I want people to know <laughs> I actually wanted people to see it like wow they're crystal clear yes they are thank you very much <laughs> so I felt like the holder maybe to make it stand out from the coasters the holder could get an edge of silver and that's pretty much what I did I didn't touch the coasters with the silver pen once I had done these it was time for latex so that's what I did. I latexed the back. Now, if you are a latexer, if you do decide to use latex or PVA glue, as someone else has told me, you don't have to put this much on. I choose to do this purely because it just gives me so much protection. And at times where I've left the center clear, I've like the resin just knows. It's like the resin knows the center is clear. So it's going to travel right into the center. I decided to absolutely flood the backs of these with the liquid latex and I don't know what it is about liquid latex it stops at the edge it's even better behaved than resin like if resin could behave like latex oh the world would just be a, such a happier place for resin artists here you are you just see me doing this but I'm not going to show you all of it I do actually back every single piece in the kit so I back all four coasters and I back the coaster holder and you're just about to see a clip around about now this is them and this is the next day so 24 hours later that latex is fully dried and I have been able to flip these upside down I've used a paintbrush to flick off any excess glitter what I didn't want was all of that glitter coming up into the top coat so I've used a paintbrush to flick off the excess and now I'm just top coating. They are risen up off the table and I'm really not worried about any drip off at this point. But I am, I am taking my time. This is sped up. So I am trying, I'm trying my best, you know, me and top coating. I am trying here. There was only a couple of drip offs on a couple of them, whereas one or, one or two of them um, really were dry underneath. There was none at all. So sometimes I get it right, sometimes I still get drips. Um, but the latex, I knew the latex would save them all, so it was perfectly fine. Here's a close-up. I thought, you know, throw in a close-up and you'll get, <laughs> you'll get to see that. I don't know. Here they are all done. And honestly, I was loving them at this point. You know when you just love something so much and you're so excited for it? Next day, this is why I put a lot of latex. Watch this. Oh, just isn't that the most satisfying peel 
Like I have done thin latex and I've done thick latex. Thin latex comes off like string, like like stretchy string. But when you put a thick layer on like I did, it comes off. Look at this. It's a dream, an absolute dream to peel off. And it brought every single, I mean, how many drips did that one have? This one, hardly any. Look at that. I mean, probably two, three, four. But yeah, it's a dream. So I haven't yet tried PVA. I know a few people in my last video did tell me I could try PVA. Haven't tried it yet, but I will do at some point. I'm just, I'm in love with latex at this point, you know? So I'm just gonna, oh. I'm loving the results of these. I am telling you, I am loving the results of these. That one, I could actually just do a video just on peeling. Anyway, I'm going to stop peeling now. And uh, okay, last one, last one, look. Oh, okay. Okay, all right, enough, enough, Claire. All right, we're now going to get on to putting the holder together. The plan was to put the holder together as per instructions. So you glue the sides to the base. Now, that would be great if you didn't top coat all of the coasters. So what had happened was I had increased the depth of all four coasters together by top coating them. Um, they still fit, but here you see me putting it on top. This was a massive error. I put one of them on top when really I should have put it down the sides. You should put both of them down the sides of that center point and hold them in place until they dried. But what happened was I realized I've put them in the wrong place. The coasters did not fit and did not fit the way I'd put them. So molds and shapes, I am sorry. My first error. Honestly, I can't get through a video without making a mistake. I can't, I just can't. I don't think I want to at this stage. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think I actually want to. So I just propped them up and I held them in place with two rolls of sellotape and I thought, brilliant, great job. Come back in an hour. But what happened was they didn't fit. So I had to pull them apart. I had to sellotape them back together and use UV resin. I didn't film it because I was just frustrated by the whole thing. But here you can see they are now on the outside of that centerpiece. And I taped them up really well and poured UV resin in the center, which did the most perfect job. And that is it. That is everything. I hope you've absolutely loved this video. Huge thank you again to Moulds and Shapes for sending me this coaster kit. I have really loved using it. Cannot wait to use it for other styles and uh, hopefully some Jesmonite. That would be fun. And everyone else, if you've made it this far, you're amazing. And I will see you in the next video. Everything will be linked down below. Don't forget to go check it out. Have an amazing weekend. I'll see you then. Bye.